What's up, beautiful people? It's your boy, Joshua Martin. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you my filmmaking gear for 2020. So starting off with the core element of this whole setup, the Black Panther Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. I really like this camera. Um, and the reason why I picked it up is the color science. I'm getting more into understanding how color works and the type of style that I'm looking for and the back of the pocket delivers that, especially using the capabilities of RAW, B-RAW that is. I have the camera in a tilt to full cage and I have the top handle as well as the bottom 15 mil rail locking system. It's a great system. Not a huge fan of the top handle just because it gets a little loose after a while, especially with a lot of weight on this. Um, handle um, because it's not like a NATO rail which I would prefer but it's just a you know a screw on top and you screw it into the cage in addition I have the adapter mount um, and I'll talk a little bit about that later because I have a Eslon Magic PL mount and a Metal Bones mount and another accessory I picked up was the right angle HDMI adapter um, and it just allows the HDMI cable to come um, a little bit more compact rather than it sticking out of the camera. The media that I use is the Angel Bird CFast cards. Um, I really love these cards. They're fast, they're reliable. I have a one terabyte and a 256 gigabyte uh, CFast cards. For my monitors, I use the Swit CM S75F. It's a 3000 nit monitor, but the main features I really like it was really not a main feature, but it's a lightweight body. It's made out of plastic, but it's lightweight. Um, definitely keeps the weight of my rig more balanced. And it's seven inch and it's bright. So those are the main things I really like about the, the monitor itself. The Ninja V, it is funny to use this. Um, and you might, some of you might be wondering, why do I even have this? Well, this is from a previous camera build I had. I went to Africa last year and I used this monitor in conjunction with the FS7 and FS5. It was great. Um, so I still have it and I use it for my Fujifilm system um, because I can get ProRes files out of this monitor from that camera. It has its use cases for different cameras that I tend to use that can utilize the ProRes RAW or the ProRes files in general. So that's why I have it and it's a smaller monitor. So if I do need to strip them, my rig down a little bit more, I'll use this monitor. And for the media for this monitor, I have the the one terabyte SSDs, the Atom X, which is the smaller version, and then the original version of the SSD. And if I'm going to rent another Shogun, I'll have this recording option for the media as well. So I have the 8mm f4 from SLR Magic. It's a micro four third mount lens. Fantastic lens. I highly recommend having it in your kit. If you're using the micro four third system, I've done several reviews on this, so make sure to check that out. I have the 18 mil from SLR Magic, so it's about a 34-ish equivalent on the pocket natively. Um, I have some mixed feelings with this. I'm still going to be doing a review on it, but I don't see myself using this lens moving forward because personally, I, I have this next lens I'm going to be sharing with you. So moving on to my next lens is the SLR Magic 25 APO Micro Prime. Love this lens. I reviewed it a while back when they announced it, and it's a... <laughs> Well, just wait to the full review. I had to shoot a little bit more with it. It's kind of hard because COVID-19 has, you know, taken away a lot of my freelance jobs, but I'm going to make this work and get you guys a little more in-depth review of what this lens can do. I think it's like one of the best options on the market in terms of getting into the Cine um, lineup, Cine lens lineup, because in terms of its price point, it's cheaper than your typical Zine, your Rokinon Zine lenses, and those go for about $1,700. You're looking at $1,100, $1,200 for this lens. I digress. We'll get, a little, get into that a little bit later. But I love this lens. I have this paired with the Metal Bones 0.64 XL adapter. This gets me close to 1.29 crop rather than the 1.9 crop on the pocket. And it's closer to full frame. Not exactly, but I love the look. Um, this lens itself covers full frame and 8K sensors, but obviously, you know, this is a 4K sensor and I, I like the combination. It's a beautiful look from what I, from what I've seen. And you might think this is a very limiting lens set. I know how to make my lenses work, how versatile I want to be with it. I do a lot of planning, but if I do need to rent, I can rent EF glass. This is hence why I picked up the Metabones. 
And a quick note on the Metal Bones, first time me ever buying an adapter. Um, I like it. I like the look that it gives. I rather I went for the XL rather than the Ultra. I didn't want to use APS-C lenses. I wanted to start building my full frame lens set. So that's why I went this route. Adding on to my lenses, I use the SLR Magic PL 1 through 3 anamorphics. I have the 35, 50, and 75. I've done a I've done a walkthrough of how the pocket handles the 133s. And the look can be good. Um, it's not as strong as a two times anamorphic, as you all know. But there are some workarounds. I would use diopters for close-up shots. And man, it is gorgeous. And that, that review is going to be coming a little bit later as an update. Um, but in order for me to properly use this, and I, I know a lot of you all ask me, how do you put a follow focus on these lenses? So quickly, um, you had to set your focus to six feet and then you add your follow focus there. Uh, if you want to use a matte box, you have to buy their adapter and it's a $200 adapter. I bought it and you just slide it on and it allows you to put on a 14, 114 mil clamp on matte box. And that's what I have here with the wooden camera. And how I mount these lenses onto the camera is the SLR Magic PL to MFT adapter and I have the locking mount underneath it as well. So that's how I you know, get these on the camera. For my battery system, I use V-mount batteries. I have the Anton Bauer Titan batteries as well as the Core SSW battery for the Pocket 4K. And how I use these, I use the V-mount plate from Wooden Camera and a Canvate uh, cheese plate. And that gives me the vertical stance of the V-mount. The Anton batteries, the one is a 150 watt hour battery and the other one's a 98. Both travel approved. I've taken these to Africa. I've taken these all over the States. Uh, fantastic batteries, hold a charge really long, really well. So no complaints here. And I tend to either put it close to my screen or away from my screen. I can show you what the uh, configuration looks a little bit. But moving on to my other battery is the, the Core WX battery. And that is a much smaller battery. It's a 48 hour watt battery. And I like to mount this directly to the bottom of my, my rig. As you can see here, if I'm just going out and about just testing lenses or just keeping a real light profile, I have the monitor on top. And I'll power that through the V-mount battery system as well as the camera and whatever other accessories, but mainly just those two. Now getting to the real base of how I start building out either my handheld rig setup or the production setup or the anamorphic setup itself, I use the small rig VCT plate and shoulder mount. This allows me to really, one, have a real lock secure uh, tripod system because of the VTC system and, and a quick release. So it's really nice. But um, the shoulder mount option I like because it gives me a lot of flexibility is how I want to build out my rig and balance my rig. So you've already probably seen this already. I made a review on the tilt of map box and the follow focus. I think these are great options in terms of its price point. Um, they work really well. And yeah, really nothing else to say about that. Now, I did pick up the wooden camera map box. And like I was saying earlier about the clamp hood adapter for the anamorphic lens, it's a 114. And at the time, I really couldn't find any other map clamp on map box system that had a 114 option. So that's what I purchased. It's overpriced in my opinion, but um, I do like the fact that you can screw out the back and, this, and change it. So I do have an 85 just in case, as well as a 114 for the anamorphic setup. The cables that I use. I have the HDMI, of course, the cable that powers the Blackmagic to the V-mount, and the cable that powers whatever monitor I'm going to be using. Luckily with the SWIT, it comes with a D-Tap to DC power adapter. It comes with the SWIT monitor, that, and then I use a dummy battery with the Atomos. In terms of other accessories that I use, I have the small rig swivel mount. I really like it. It's really, really built really well, um, as well as the small rig magic arm itself really great these are the ball head ones i like this design a lot and if i need to use that i'll use it and for audio which you're actually hearing right now i have the rode ntg3 uh, shotgun mic going into a zoom recorder and that's what i use for all of my audio 